the way they puzzle back. So the reason why I wanted to make this video simply is because when I was thinking about buying the Loewe puzzle bag, I couldn't find the reviews that I was looking for. I saw so many reviews made by people who had just bought their bag, so they had no kind of like knowledge of the wear and tear of it. I saw no reviews of how each of the many Loewe sizes that exist actually sit on the body, how they look on someone who's short, because <laughs> I'm short, um, and they were just first impressions, lots of first impressions, and that's all well and good, but I can walk into a Loewe store and try on a bag and get a first impression for myself. But when you're thinking about putting down some serious money on, let's face it, a very, very fickle item, you need more than just first impressions. You know, it's a lot of money to spend on a bag. <laughs> and so I thought, you know, now I've had mine for a while and I've really lived in it and lived with it, I think it's time for me to do an honest review give my recommendations and give just a different viewpoint that I couldn't really find at the time when I wanted to buy mine. So. so I want to talk about more about styling. I have touched on its overall kind of personality, it's quite casual, it's quite bohemian and um, but I also really want to talk about proportions of the bag because this is something that I really struggled with actually this was my my biggest kind of bugbear about a lot of the reviews that I saw so I'm five foot two and I wasn't sure which size to get do I get a small because I small sounds too small to be an everyday bag or do I go for a medium, which is in my mind, in theory, I thought might be more practical. But being five foot two, I'm sure, and I'm, I'm not particularly big in any way, I didn't, I didn't want it to look like I was carrying around luggage, you know? I wanted it to be in the middle, a good size to carry my shit but nothing that would drown me or look like I'm heading to the airport, you know. So I will insert some pictures of how it looks in proportion to my frame and hopefully that, that will actually help you decide which size to go to. If you can go to a Loewe store, by all means, go look in the middle the mirror and get the sales associate to bring out different sizes for you. Um, I think that's probably the single most important thing to do when you are spending so much money on a bag and you've only seen it online or you've only seen it on other people in person or online. Um, your bag has to complement you. Um, people should see you before they see the bag. It sounds corny, but it's true. Um, so I would encourage you to go to the store. I didn't because I'm an idiot. <laughs> but it really worked out in the end. The small size I think is the perfect size for me. Um, yeah, that compares with the size. If you are taller and you're broader, whatever, then I think you can. You should consider the medium. Okay, so next part of my review that I want to talk about and touch on, um, and that's capacity. So we've spoken about size on the frame, on the body, and which size is practical for you based on your stature. But obviously you're buying a bag, and the bag has to have use. Um, and what you're able to carry in the bag is really important. I saw a number of reviews of people who were like, or just 
general, not even to do with the Luego puzzle, but in general, their reviews is like, oh, you know, I can carry my card holder, my phone, no, like I can carry my card holder, my lipstick, my keys, um, and oh, I normally carry my phone in my hand, so that doesn't really matter, but I can get the essentials in and that's okay with me. Again, I'm not talking about specifically the way they puzzle reviews, I just mean bag reviews in general. And for me, I don't use my bags like that, you know? I do not carry my my phone in my back pocket. You're, you're hoping that it gets stolen if you do that. Stop doing that. And I don't carry my phone in my hand. Again, it's just, I think it's a bad habit. And I like to put my phone in my bag away for, away from, you know, prying eyes. So it's not something I do carrying my phone in my hand. Um, so my bag, if it's going to be a workhorse and it's going to be an everyday bag, it needs to fit my phone. It needs to fit my card holder, my other purse. I have a larger coin purse. I'll show you some bits that I have in the bag. I don't want to show you everything because I don't want to air my shit out on the internet. But um, I need to be able to carry my lip balms, my house keys. Um, Yes, so, as I was saying, staff pass needs to fit in there, um, other bits and bobs, they all need to fit in my bag. I might not use everything every day, but it needs to be in there um, to make it a worthwhile everyday bag, which I believe the way the puzzle bag is intended to be. So, I'm going to show you what you can fit in there um and hopefully that um helps you gives you more of an informed idea of how practical in an everyday instance this bag is so you can see that it's half empty and this is typically how full it will be for me on any given day um so, I have like bits and bobs and junk and like pads and tampons and like stuff, parts and stuff in there. Um, I, don't, I don't even use this, but it's fucking cute. My sister, it's the mini Ikea shopping bag. <laughs> um, I've got a coin purse, I have my hand coins and stuff in. I've got card holders. I've got Um, I've got my keys, I've got a bit of makeup in there. Um, now, this back zip I think is really, really useful and quite important. I use it every day, all the time. You cannot fit like an iPhone in this back pocket, full disclosure. You can't put your phone there, otherwise, it will um, peek out at the top. However, I keep my house keys in there because when you get to the front door, you don't want to like fumble in your bag looking for your keys you just need to know where they are put it in the door and get into your house without the boogeyman behind you waiting for you to get to your door and like fumble for your keys so your keys are in here and then i put my lip balms because it's something you're just gonna like you don't want to go digging for you just want to have them there um so that's how I use the bag. And as I said, I don't carry a lot, a lot, but there are certain things that are non-negotiables for me. And I have to fit. So, to conclude, do I think the Luevo puzzle bag is worth it? Is it practical? Is it everything your hopes and dreams and desires are made of? Yes, I do. <laughs> I think that it's a great purchase, if I'm honest. Um, I don't regret it. And I would buy it over and over and over again, if I'm honest. Um, I think it looks great, it performs great, it's a nice size, this particular size that I got. Um, yes. 
is is it a lot of money for a bag? Yeah, it is. And I think that in this day and age, we're very desensitized to the prices of all these luxury bags. As long as you're not putting yourself out there financially, and you can afford it, <laughs> then I say, get it. Yeah. Um, if you can, look for Lueve puzzle bags on Vestiaire, on eBay, on consignment websites, um, different places. If, for example, Netball, they have discounts, matches, browns, all of that. Just keep an eye out for discounts. Um, I got mine as what I call a push present. Um, no, I did not have a baby, but we bought a house and as a little pat on my back, congratulations. So that's my overall review of the bag. I really hope it helped. So if you found that helpful, um, be sure to subscribe. I'm gonna hopefully do some more reviews. I'm gonna have more videos about home renovations, interior decorating, things like that. And also, um, if you're into podcasts, particularly fashion podcasts, be sure to subscribe to a podcast that I have with my bestie called Style Over Substance on all the podcast player apps um, and we're going to have some episodes on YouTube shortly so subscribe there if you're into podcasts and subscribe to my channel here if you found this helpful anyway thanks babe bye